Hey, this is Paul Payton with Focal Splash, and today I'm going to show you how to use elements from a few pictures that you've taken to create a complete composition. Here's a few pictures that a photographer sent to me. She was very happy with the pictures, but there are a few elements in each picture that are good and not so good. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and hit auto white balance, which is a little too red for me, and then auto tone, which the exposure is too high. So, you know, we're not going to trust those guys, but uh, that's just the first things. It's just kind of get things started with the blacks and the highlights, contrast. It gives what Lightroom thinks is, is the best thing, and obviously I, uh, we're not going to use that. So uh, the next thing, just looking here at temperature, uh, it is a summer evening going towards sunset and I would like to see a lot of yellow in here and looking at this at this point I'm thinking and I've looked at it before so there's a little bit of cheating going on here right but um, 6800 right there that's a uh, fairly yellow but like I said it's a summer evening we got these yellow flowers we got a, a yellowing sunset it's looking pretty good all right and as far as the tent we're going to lower that. Remember, it's a little red. I'm going to make that about 10. Just bring back from that red that came up with the uh, auto white balance. And then uh, exposure. Let's first mess with highlights here. I like to just bring the highlights down, kind of do a, a random number here. You know, something like that. And then black. It looks still looks kind of bright, so I'd like to bring the, the blacks down just a little bit something like that and then uh let's see the whites we're not clipping yet on the whites so i'm just going to bring the whites up a little bit to about right about there right just as it starts clipping and i'll pull it back slightly and then uh clarity um i thought about adding some clarity but you don't really want to add clarity to people's faces clarity is great for scenery and landscape and things like that and it's good for some things but for now we're not going to add clarity to the whole picture uh, but there is a nice uh, new feature fairly new called dehaze if you haven't used this it's down in the effects panel and I'm gonna take dehaze and I'm gonna bring it up to 20 like that see how that's bringing a lot of contrast a lot of the depth a lot of the the sort sort of the darkness uh, back into the picture it's not not so overexposed anymore and let's look at the vignette i like to play with the vignette you know you don't want to go and to a vignette where you can see it i I much rather have a vignette where you really you just really can't see it uh it's there you know that's that's zero ish and then you know when you start to see it and just pull back a little bit so maybe like 20 20 happens to be a good number for me a lot of the time for a vignette. And like I said, you can't really see it, you know. And then uh, I like to also take the feather of the vignette and bring it up slightly. That helps to minimize being able to see the vignette because it feathers it out more. All right, so that looks pretty good. So let's go back up to basic. I want I like the lots of colors here. So let's just add a little bit of vibrance. You know, if you want to add a big punch of color, you could add saturation. Now that's going to saturate and continue to saturate things that are already saturated. I see those yellows are just killing your eyes now. Uh, but if something is close to being saturated already, vibrance won't raise the saturation of those colors. It just raises the saturation of other colors. So let's just give the vibrance just a little bitty tweak here, about to 10, 11, something like that. And uh, that's it. I'm looking at this picture thinking that's a really good start for pre Photoshop and uh, we have these other pictures here now we could edit those individually or we can just grab the first one go to the second one and hit previous and that will put all the settings that we put on the first one into this one and that looks pretty good to me and the third one and hit previous and again it puts all the settings here and this is just a little blown out because we can actually see the Sun behind his head so again we have a photographer who really knows what they're doing here um, with putting the Sun in a place where uh, it would be blocked but the, the light would still be shining out and causing a rim light on their shoulders and heads and hair hair light and it looks 
Um, it is a really good shot. And so now uh, we're going to choose some elements from each of these pictures. We like this picture for the baby's eyes, this picture for the young man's smile and face, and this picture for the composition. So we're going to combine all three of these pictures in Photoshop. So we'll open all three of them in Photoshop and we'll get started. Okay, we have all three pictures open in Photoshop. One, two, three. And what we'll do first is, just to make things easy, I'm going to select this part of the picture with the lasso tool. Just give a good selection outside of him. Get the whole thing and hit Control J. Put him on his own layer. Control V and we'll move him to the picture with the composition. It's a good spot for now. Then we'll go to this picture here and all we're going to grab from here is with the lasso tool L, we'll grab the whole baby's head there. Now let's go a little bit bigger. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use the baby's whole head or the uh, you know, so we'll grab quite a bit more. Make sure we get this mom's shoulder in here just about that big and hit uh, control J to duplicate that and you can see that it duplicated just the just that part of the picture press V grab this and move it over to this picture like so just put it right there of course the baby's head slightly bigger than in the other picture so we're gonna have to do some changes there but this is uh, the basic composition here I was thinking, as I saw this picture, that uh, the father's head is slightly close to the top. We might try and uh, expand that a little bit. That the son here, it would be nice if he was a little higher in the, in the picture, composition-wise. We don't have to worry about the pocket. We'll, re we'll reestablish the, the pocket and the arm. And... Uh, yeah, I think that'll be a better composition overall. So, you know, he's standing on a on a little hill or standing on a little bitty box or something to give him another couple of inches. It's not the end of the world to make him a little taller. Uh, and to do that, we'll go to the crop tool here, and I will zoom out a little bit. Make sure content aware is on, and I want to just raise the composition a little bit, and also raise this just slightly to make sure our taller boy isn't cut off on the bottom. And we'll see how this works. Sometimes it's magic. Huh? We'll go ahead and position them a little better too in the composition while we're here since we're doing that crazy maybe not position them so much how about like that just a little more room over there see how the content aware crop tool works in this picture all right what do we see over here is this a a terrible thing mm, maybe it's a little bit of a repeat here but i think that'll work i think we can use it see this was repeated here but that works See, the picture right here is a little bit odd, and I think we could fix that. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. And we'll put that layer on top of everything. Change to the brush tool. Choose pink for the brush. And that color. Hit OK. And then we can circle this because we want to fix that. We see that. I want to do something with that. This looks a little bit repeaty. I want to make sure... This doesn't look repeaty, and we need to fix this definitely here, and the pocket, and of course the whole thing with the baby. Circle that. Yeah, I'm thinking that's what we need to fix, and so we can turn this layer off and just keep it right there, and it'll help remind us if we forget something. Let's start with the young man. So we'll start with this layer. We'll create a layer mask by clicking here. Choose the brush tool. You can hit D, which defaults the colors, so if you have pink or something here, it'll default to black and white, and then you can hit X to switch the colors to black. And then make the brush a little bigger. Make sure we have a soft edge brush. I like that. Hardness is zero. 
and just see what happens. Let's do it 100% opacity for now. You can choose the opacity of the brush by hitting 1 for 10%, 0 for 100%, or, or 6 for 60%. You know, so let's choose 0 for 100%, and we'll just bring back everything. With the uh, layer mask, we can bring it back, we can take it out. We have pretty much full control over over what we do here. All right. I'm going to like that. And hit X to switch colors. Just going to bring back in his shoulder a little bit. We see that that would be cool if the dad had that many uh, extra fingers. So control Z on that. And I will put this back just so we have some reference. Switching colors again, putting that thumb back in, and then just make sure we turn this layer on, use pink as the brush, circle this, just to make sure, and turn that layer off. Alright, as far as over here, we have something going on here, let's zoom in on it, and that looks uh, pretty good. So here, I'm just going to choose layer mask when you paint with the black brush. Let's see how that looks. Fix this pocket here a little more. Yep. And that button does look a little odd, but all we have to do is move it. <laughs> we'll move that button later. So let's just do this for fun. I'll just circle it in black since I don't want to change tools. So that'll remind me to fix that button. Okay, this looks all fine here. Uh-oh, got a little deal, deal here. Make sure you choose the layer mask. And painting with black again, just to restore that pocket. To me, I'm looking, looking pretty good there. All right, down here, we're going to go to the layer mask, and we're going to paint with black. And fix his thumb right here. Just get rid of his thumb. Looking kind of spooky. Alright. From there, I'm going to create a new layer. Control, so Shift, N. Hit Enter. That's the way I create new layers. On the new layer, Clone Stamp Tool. I'll click here. And I'll start painting here with the clone stamp tool. Just trying to grab some shoulder material and whatnot to see if we can control T. Move that over like that. Circle it down. Rotate it down. Maybe something like that. We'll just hit enter on that. And putting a layer mask on that with the brush tool. Painting in black, we'll get rid of it off of his hand here. First things first, I'll use the clone stamp tool, alt here, and paint up like this, and make it visible. Brush and black. For now, I think that's good enough. All right, I think the boy is composited in pretty nicely. At that point, the recording abruptly ended, and I had to start it again uh, after having done some edits. So what I did was I spent some time cleaning up the outside, you know, before and after. You can see up here in the corner. I just fixed that. I fixed some things that were causing it to look duplicated right here and here. Turn it off and on. I fixed the shirt a little bit more and the green spot on his hand. Off and on. Alright. And then I spent a long time of trial and error and I came up with this replacement for the baby's face. And that's the baby and that's what I came up with. So I'm certain that you all are glad that I rejected that after having worked on it quite extensively. I rejected that fix there and I said, no, that's not what we're going to do. So I decided just to replace the baby's eyes. 
So I did some other little bit of magic here and I cropped out some more so that we'd have a little bit better composition with the framing. And then I added in some more sunflowers over here to finish off the composition and the cropping and added some leaves over here because these leaves were duplicated. Didn't make it look very nice, I didn't think. So I took some leaves from over here, added them in and uh, painted away some, you know, things that made them look, make them look more realistic. See this leaf right here had a, a bug was chewing on it. So I fixed it, things like that, just to make it look different than the other leaves on the other side. And then I added just the iris and the white of the eye from the other picture. So the baby's moving her eye back and forth. And here's the other eye. To have the baby looking more towards the camera, which was one of the big uh, fixes in the whole picture. And after that, we'll zoom out. I did something else to fix the, an error that I created when I was working on the baby's face and this is the template of what we were supposed to fix you may notice that without telling you when I did it <laughs> you may notice that I fixed quite a bit of the sky here I filled it in with uh, what was here just duplicated and filled it in and sorry that the video crashed on me <laughs> and so we turned that back off and then I saved it and went back into Lightroom you may notice that it's a little bit adjusted here what I did was I added a uh, radial gradient. You can see that uh, I added some yellows to give the light coming through the trees an even more sunset look. We already had nice highlights from the photographer. Did a great job with highlights on the shoulders and around the heads, and it was very nice. And so I wanted to make them a little oranger, so I added some magenta and some yellow. I raised the exposure so that it would bring these lights out even more and raised the saturation so that the yellow and the orange would come through. Obviously when I added the radial gradient, I went to brush here and I went down to erase and I erased it off of his face so his face wouldn't be so yellow and off of her but the maintaining the highlights that the, the, so that they would be yellow and that's it that's uh that's what i did uh, it started out as a really good picture and i think it ended up really nice um, so the main things we did one we took the uh, boy here from another picture and moved him into this one moved him up a little bit so that He'd be a little bit higher into the composition. We added some space up here so the father's head wasn't so close to the top of the picture so that also made the composition better. We added some uh, room over here using content aware crop. It's a new feature in Photoshop if you haven't tried it. Man you should try it. It does take a little bit of fine tuning around the line that you create. A lot of times you have to just fine tune that a little bit, but it uh, does a, a lot better job than you could do before. And so uh, we added a little space over here, a little space on the top so that they would fit nicely in the frame. And we uh, cleaned up a little bit of the hairs and things here. I didn't show you that and we did that. And also uh, moved the baby's eyes so that she's not looking so far off camera, but more towards the cameraman towards the camera lady in this case. We also moved his button because of the compositing here to just make it more even in between there. What happens when you're compositing? Sometimes you create problems that you have to fix. And so that's what we've done a, a number of times. So that's it. If you have any questions or you have any comments, if you hate something that I did, uh, let me know. I'd like to hear complaints about that I shouldn't have done something that I did. And you know, I can always learn. I've seen some amazing things with Photoshop and <laughs> and I'm still learning. So uh, comments would be appreciated. Thank you.